Hey guys, what's up? I'm Erin and welcome back to the channel. I am a ferocious reader. At a minimum, I read a book a week. Sometimes it's a book a day and ever since I started working from home, I will listen to audiobooks while I work. I'll put them at one and a half times speed and just work away in the background. A lot of what I read is nonfiction and pretty unsurprisingly, a lot of the books I pick up are money related. I started reading about money when I was still in high school, and I think that's an invaluable time to learn money lessons. At that point, you're still a kid. You have a clean slate. You don't have any debt. You probably haven't made any big financial mistakes. You haven't chosen the wrong career. You're still brand new to the money game. And it's easier to start off on the right foot than it is to make a whole slew of mistakes. It's easier to build good habits than it is to have to unlearn bad ones. The way I see it is authors are experts, because if you think about it, we're all experts at one thing or another, and they're taking what took them months or years or even a lifetime to learn and boiling it down to 150 or 200 pages, and then they're giving it to you for a couple dollars, or if you're like me, for free, because you can check it out from the library. That's a steal. How can you beat that? Why not learn from people who've already been there? I feel like their teachings are invaluable. And if you get just one nugget of information from a book, one piece of valuable information that you can implement into your life, that book was worth it to read. You don't have to agree with everything an author says. You're a human. Have your own opinions, your own perspectives, your own beliefs. But if they teach you one thing, that book was worth it. I've actually been toying with the idea of having a book club of sorts on this YouTube channel and taking books that I've read throughout the month and presenting their key takeaways and their key lessons. So if you're interested in a video like that, it would just be occasionally, let me know in the comments down below. We can even do suggested books from viewers. We can approach it from however you guys might be interested in it. But for this video, I wanna go over some of the books that have centered on money, that have truly had a major impact on the way I think about money, my perspective, how I look at money for an entire lifetime. So these financial books have pretty much changed my life. Number one is The Millionaire Next Door by Dr. Thomas Stanley. I've actually read this book a handful of times throughout my life. I just reread it last month, actually. It's an absolute classic. It is the most popular everyday millionaire book out there. Dr. Stanley spent the vast majority of his life studying millionaires. And you know what he found out? They look a lot like, well, the everyday person. They aren't out there driving a flashy car, dripping in diamonds. They look a lot like you or your neighbor. Many people who live in expensive homes and drive luxury cars do not actually have much wealth. Then we discover something even odder. Many people who have a great deal of wealth do not even live in upscale neighborhoods. In fact, through his research, Dr. Stanley found that the vast majority of the time, people who look wealthy aren't actually really wealthy. Instead, they're heavily in debt and financing their lifestyle. So rather than trying to put on this air of facade and impress other people, why not drop the act? Why not put your money to work and instead focus on actually becoming wealthy? The other thing I really love about this book is that it puts the idea of becoming wealthy within your control. I know the news headlines like to cast a negative light on wealthy people, and a lot of people walk around with that attitude of wealthy people are bad somehow, like they took advantage of someone to become wealthy or they somehow inherited it. But why not drop that narrative? If other people wanna be negative, that's their problem. But you don't have to be. You can think that becoming wealthy is totally within your control and live your life in that way. And besides, if you walk around thinking that wealthy people are bad people, do you ever think that you would become a wealthy person? You wouldn't want to evolve into a bad person, so I think subconsciously you'd probably sabotage yourself. Drop the narrative of negativity around wealth and allow yourself to build wealth. If you wanna be wealthy, you're gonna have to put in the work. Don't expect it to be easy, don't expect anyone to hand it to you, but if you're willing to put in the work, you might find that it truly is possible. Wealth is more often the result of a lifestyle of hard work, perseverance, planning, and most of all, self-discipline. Dr. Stanley found that millionaires have seven things in common, those being live well below their means, allocate time and money efficiently, believe financial independence is more important than displaying high social status, their parents don't provide economic outpatient care, 
The adult kids are economically self-sufficient. They're proficient in targeting market opportunities and they chose the right occupation. When I first read The Millionaire Next Door, I was in high school and I decided that's what I wanted to be. I didn't wanna look wealthy. I didn't wanna impress anyone. I wanted to be successful. I wanted to be able to take care of my family. And to me, that's what The Millionaire Next Door is. And Dr. Stanley even came out with a formula to see how you were doing on your road to success and becoming that millionaire next door. What you do is you multiply your age times your household income and divide by 12. That should be your net worth. If you're under that amount, well, you're likely an average accumulator of wealth. If you're over that amount, well, you're a prodigious accumulator of wealth. Next up, Your Money or Your Life by Vicki Robin and Joseph Dominiquez. This book is often seen as one of the most influential on the FIRE movement, that financial independence retire early. And my key takeaway from this book was the value of my time. Money is something you trade your life energy for. You sell your time for money. It doesn't matter that Ned over there sells his time for $100 and you sell yours for $20 an hour. Ned's money is irrelevant to you. The only real asset you have is your time, the hours of your life. It doesn't matter how anyone else is doing. The only thing that should matter is how you are doing relative to the person you want to be. You're living your life. I always like to phrase this as, Finance is personal, because it is. In the book, the authors talk about real wage. Let's say you make $20 per hour working an eight to five job, and you do the standard 40 hour work week. So that means you're making $160 a day or $800 a week. But are you really making $20 an hour? What if you have to sit in traffic an hour each way to get to and from work? Given the choice, if you didn't work that job, you probably wouldn't be sitting in traffic every single day. You would probably find something better to do with your time. But if we factor in your commute, instead of an eight hour workday, you now have a 10 hour workday. Sure, your boss pays you that $20 per hour, but you're actually dedicating 10 hours to your work. So your $160 per day now turns into $16 an hour. Of course, once you factor in other things like gas prices, the cost of maintaining a professional wardrobe, taxes, your hourly rate drops even further. I'm not gonna throw that in as an example here because it gets a little convoluted, but I would encourage you to actually run the math because it is your life after all. So in this instance, if you were actually able to find a work from home position that paid say $18 an hour, you would be getting a raise in your real hourly rate. At this point, you'd have zero commute. You'd just walk down the hall to your home office. You would have an extra two hours in your day to do whatever you want with. So potentially that could actually be a better situation for you. The only real asset you have is your time, the hours of your life. From another point of view, let's say you're looking to go to dinner and that dinner will cost you $60. From the perspective of your hourly rate, you will have to work three hours at your job in order to pay for that dinner or 3.7 hours at your real hourly rate of $16 an hour. So then the question becomes, is that dinner really worth three or four hours of your life? If the answer is yes, go ahead and enjoy dinner. If the answer is no, find something better to spend your money on. Same with big ticket items. If you're planning a vacation that will cost you $2,500, if you're working for that $20 per hour job, that vacation will require you to work 125 hours or three full weeks plus another five hours. Or if we look at it from your real hourly wage of $16 an hour, you would need to work 156.25 hours. That's practically four weeks or an entire month just to pay for that vacation. Is it worth it? Is it worth trading a month of your life for five days on the beach? Now, the only person who can really answer these questions is you. Only you get to decide what is valuable to you, what is worth trading hours of your life for in order to spend money on. If you look at it from this perspective, you might begin to spend a little bit more consciously. That was my takeaway from the book. I began to look at what was valuable to me. I value my time differently and I look at spending differently. The next two books we're actually gonna lump together because they have a very similar theme. The Little Book of Common Sense Investing by Jack Bogle and Where Are All the Customers' Yachts by Fred Shewood. Mr. Bogle created the index fund and a little company called Vanguard. And if you know me, 
you know I love Vanguard. And no book has had a more profound impact on my investing life than the little book of Common Sense Investing. If you have seen any of my other videos, you know I'm an indexer, I buy the market, I hold it forever. Or as Jack would say, don't look for the needle in the haystack, just buy the haystack. Mutual funds come with hefty expense ratios and load fees, all of which drag down the return for the investor and pad the pocket for the fund managers. These fund managers are constantly buying and selling different holdings, meaning that they are increasing the expense to you and increasing your tax burden. Over the course of a lifetime, this will cost the average investor hundreds of thousands of dollars. Owning the stock market over the long term is a winner's game, but attempting to beat the stock market is a loser's game. Every fund manager thinks that they can beat the market, but most of them are wrong. Yes, they are smart individuals, they have access to more information than you or I could ever imagine, but even with all of these advantages, they still can't predict the future. They can't predict how a certain stock will move or how the market as a whole will move. Customers have an unfortunate habit of asking about the financial future. Now, if you do someone the single honor of asking him a difficult question, you may be assured that you will get a detailed answer. Rarely will it be the most difficult of all answers. I don't know. Predicting the future is hard at best and impossible in most circumstances. Markets are complex and ever-changing. Why not save yourself time, money, effort, and buy the entire market and capture the market return? Where Are All the Customers Yachts has a very similar theme to The Little Book of Common Sense Investing. It starts with a man visiting New York and looking at all the boats owned by the bankers and the brokers. And naturally he turns to ask, well, where are all the customers' yachts? Well, the customers who have been dutifully following the advice of their brokers and their bankers cannot afford the yachts. Fees matter. And finally, The Total Money Makeover by Dave Ramsey. Now, I read this book when I was a teen, so I didn't really have any debt to speak of, but I decided then and there that I was gonna be debt-free forever. Debt is so ingrained into our culture that most Americans cannot even envision a car without a payment, a house without a mortgage, a student without a loan, or a credit without a card. Debt really is the norm in our culture. But as I grew older, my money management style changed. Honestly, I'm still pretty debt-free. The first any type of debt I've ever had is this house, a mortgage. I've never had a car payment. I'm a huge fan of credit cards, but I pay them off every single month. I never had any student loans. I worked and I got every scholarship imaginable. Honestly, I'm still pretty anti-debt and this book made me that way. I like the freedom that comes from not owing anyone anything. I like not being in debt to others. But as I've gotten older, I do realize that there are some types of debt, like a mortgage, that are just fine to have. And that's my perspective. I still really like Dave Ramsey. You don't have to agree with someone a thousand percent. It's okay to like some of what they have to say and not agree with other pieces. I always say finance is personal. Take the bits that apply to your life that resonate with you and leave the rest. These are the books that have had the biggest impact on my financial life. I use the advice from these books every single day. Yes, there are other wonderful financial books that I wanna talk about on the channel, but these five books set the tone for my financial life. I never buy anything I can't afford. I don't simply hand my money over to someone who claims that they can beat the market. I invest in index funds and I capture the market return. I always figure out how much of my life am I trading for this item or this experience, and I ask myself, is it worth it? I don't put on airs. I don't try to impress other people. I know building wealth and finances, that's a personal journey. The only person I have to try to be better than is the person I was yesterday. What are some of your favorite financial books? The ones that have had the biggest impact on your life or ones that you're looking forward to reading? Let me know in the comments down below and secretly I'm looking for new books to read as well. I post new videos every single week. That's gonna do it for this one. If you got anything at all out of it, please give it a like. If you're new here, please consider subscribing, or if you know of anyone who might get something out of this type of content, please consider sharing. I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye.